What's up guys, I'm Mike from Stocked Up and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have a great video for everyone today. We're gonna to be talking about everything that happened over the weekend, some top stocks to watch for this week and just all the important news to look out for in the market. With that being said, if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day. And at the end of today's video, we have a $4.3 million options trade to keep your eye on for this week. So with that being said, Tom, what happened over the weekend? Yeah, over the weekend, civil rights groups and activists targeted some of Georgia's biggest firms, including Delta Airlines and Coca-Cola, which did not publicly oppose the GOP election law prior to it passing. And I'm not trying to get political with this. And, you know, obviously me and Mike aren't going to pick sides here. But the big thing is, is that some of these civil rights groups are targeting some of these companies like Delta Airlines and Coca-Cola. And we might start to see boycotts or drops on these companies, just given um, what's going on in Atlanta. And the uh, made and Major League Baseball announced that it would also pull the 2021 All Star Game from Atlanta this summer as well. So um, it seems like some stuff is going on with Georgia and those election laws, and it could actually affect some companies like Coca Cola, De Delta Airlines, and just other companies that are uh, in Georgia right now. And obviously, this this could be a pretty big thing. Is um, about half the country, you know, agrees that uh, those civil rights groups um, are correct and that those laws should not have been passed. Very interesting. So you said the MLB isn't going to have the All-Star game in Atlanta anymore? Yeah, they actually moved it from Atlanta. They have not picked the next spot, I don't believe, but they're they're moving it from Atlanta and they're facing some backlash for it and also some praise for it. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Very interesting. And then, Tom, what's going on with Tesla? I know on Friday they reported some uh, in, uh, on their delivery and production numbers. So uh, what's going on with them? Yeah, this is awesome. Tesla has been recovering nicely off of $600 and they delivered 184,800 vehicles in the first quarter of 2021 and Model S and Model X production dropped totally to zero. There's no production on those cars and all the electric vehicles it produced were Model 3 sedans and Model Y crossover SUVs, though it did deliver about 2000 Model S and Model X SUVs, but that was just stuff that they already had in inventory. And the quarter one deliveries beat Tesla's previous record of 180,570 deliveries in quarter four of 2020. So over the past two quarters, we've seen a lot of growth with Tesla and they just continue to beat their sales, which is awesome. Well, that's awesome to see. What do you think on their charts? Like, do you have any like big resistance levels coming up? I know that right now we're sitting around the $658 level. We're getting really close to 700 again. And, you know, we're kind of close to the middle of the range between 600 and $700. So like, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm actually really looking at the $700 level. It's hit that a few times in the past. If we go back to December 18th of 2020, we can see that it popped up, hit around 700 and then kind of came down before it broke that to reach new all time highs. And we can see it did hit that a couple weeks ago as well and then go down again and we're, we're heading right back up to it. So maybe these numbers will push it up through hopefully, but we'll just have to see what happens this week. But I think Tesla's going to be on a lot of people's watch list, especially if it can break that $700 resistance. Absolutely. And then when you look at like the SPY or the QQQ, like the SPY broke all time highs on Friday, broke that $400 level. We're finally starting to see the QQQ kind of come back up. We have some of these tech stocks that have been just doing nothing over the past month. They're starting to break out like Microsoft, Nvidia, you could say Netflix too. So with this upwards momentum, plus this positive news, you would think that Tesla starts to come back up, but that $700 resistance will definitely be pretty important. Yeah, for sure. And I really like how the SPY broke above $400. Like you said, a lot of people were watching that on Friday and it got rejected off of it once so, uh, to around the end of the day. And then right before close, it just exploded up through it. And just it just had a fantastic close above 400. So hopefully we can see continued growth out of the overall market this week as well. Yeah. So I heard some news about like OPEC and oil. Uh, what's going on there? Yeah, if we go to oil's chart here slash CL and we go to the max daily, you can see how oil started to kind of pop back up last week, especially on Friday. You can see how it started to pop back and oil has kind of been um, kind of tapering off to the downside here, hitting around um, 67, now pulling back to 57 and now we're hovering around 61. 
But the big thing is, is that investing.com reports that OPEC plus officially announced a deal to gradually raise oil prices or oil production starting in May. And the Wall Street Journal reported that OPEC plus will raise the output by 350,000 barrels in May and also by another 350,000 barrels in June and then by another 450,000 barrels in July, citing comments from delegates. And we can see how much this made oil actually pop, which is kind of a uh, kind of going against like supply and demand things here with oil popping on a production um, increase. Normally that would send oil down as there's more oil on the market to buy. But I guess if, if the, uh, if the production going up is going to help oil, then um, obviously we might want to be bullish on oil here over the next couple of days, just given that they're going to keep raising it in May and July as well and June. Interesting. So just want to add that they're raising the output by 350,000 barrels per day. So, you know, like you said, you would think that this would make oil fall, but it's uh, it's definitely a tricky commodity to trade. So uh, good news overall. Is there anything else, any other major news you're watching? Nothing too major this week. All right, well, let's get right into our member of the day and the momentum plays. With today's member of the day, we have DJ Monkey. So huge shout out, DJ. Uh, he's always super positive in the chat, super active, and just a great member overall. So huge shout out, DJ Monkey. Uh, thank you for everything you do in the Discord. But with that being said, let's get right into today's momentum plays. And the first one is NVIDIA. Yep, and with NVIDIA, go ahead and make it break above $555 even tomorrow. Sounds good. With the next one, we have Netflix. It had a pretty good day on Friday. Yeah, they've done very well lately. Make them pop above 542. All right, and then with the last one, we have TSM. Yep, Taiwan Semiconductors. This whole sector has been exploding, but make them break above 125.50. Sounds great. So we are eyeing all of these stocks for potential day trades tomorrow, only if they can break above the levels Tom listed. So now let's get right into the $4.3 million trade for this Friday. We are looking at the Qualcomm 140 strike call options that expired this Friday, April 9th. So looking at this chart, um, the, we're talking about the 140 strike calls. So right now, Qualcomm's at basically 138. So we're only $2 out of the money. There's a ton of upwards momentum in this sector right now. I like the way it's moving in. I can definitely see them longing these calls. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're longing them as well. I love how they have two very strong green days, and then they also broke above the 135.50 resistance as well um, to the upside. If they can break above 140, that would be amazing for whoever bought these calls. And especially with the whole semiconductor and like the whole entire chip sector moving, we have like Qualcomm, MU, AMD, NVIDIA, all those stocks have been going up a lot lately. And I think that Qualcomm is one of the best chip stocks to actually recover. And it's pretty low right now, around 137. And it had highs around 167. So I think that we could see some growth this week. And I would think just, just be very careful though of the 140 resistance because that is posing as a pretty big level. But if we do break it, it'll be awesome. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Tom. I'm looking at the chart. And this 140 level has gave the stock a lot of trouble in the past. It, is, it has acted as a previous support. Now it's resistance. So it looks like it's going to be a tough level to break. But if it does break that, this stock should have a lot of potential for this week. So let's get right into the questions from the previous episode. With the first question, we have Tony saying, would you cover Home Depot? So if we take a look at HD, um, it has just been doing amazing over the past month. Went from lows of about 250 to highs of around 308.50. So it looks great uh, like for the long term. I am a fan of them for the long term. But for the short term, it's kind of at a point where it's already up so much where like I'm not going to I'm not going to buy into it now. And at the same time, it's such a powerhouse where I wouldn't really want to short it either. So I think the best thing to do in these circumstances is like a call credit spread, if anything. But if you like, Tom, do you see anything on this one? I just feel like it's already up so much where like it's not even worth the risk to buy now. And then at the same time, like it's it's just such a powerhouse and it has so many things going for it where I don't think it would be a smart idea to short it. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, there's just so much good stuff. And guys, this is insane on this chart. The past month, I mean, it's almost all green days. Some very small like red doji candles here, but almost all green days 
from March 5th, March 5th onward. And it's just awesome to see. And it popped above all time highs as well and broke above 300. Um, I definitely would not be going against the stock right now, given what I'm seeing. It does look like it's getting a little bit flat on the intraday chart, but it's holding the 100 SMA, which is continue, continually to be um, a very strong level there for it. And I just think that this stock could also keep breaking new highs this week as well if we see it continued growth over the over the um, overall market. But I think that if we see the overall market kind of dip down, it could be a little bit worse for um, Home Depot, which is at all time highs. And I would definitely watch for the $300 level if it does start to go down because it definitely bounced off of that twice in the past and I think that's going to pose a pretty big mental um, support if we start to see the stock go down. Sounds good. With the next question we have Kay saying uh, good times for EVs. Could you take a look at Palantir? Um, I'm swinging I'm swinging the 22 strike calls that expire on May 21st of 2021. I saw a bounce off of a level of support around $21. I entered shortly after with confirmation. Do you think it will pull back at the $27 resistance level or will it break past those? So the stock is only at 23 right now. So it's hard to like accurately say anything at this point, but um, going off previous movement, um, it looks like it had that $27 level has definitely been a, a point of resistance, you can say. So I would expect it in the future to uh, also give the stock a little bit of trouble at least. Uh, what do you think, Tom? Yeah, I think that 27 is pretty solid as well. Um, and we also hit one of the uh, other resistances down here around $24. And then the stock ended up tanking right down. And if we go to uh, the intraday chart, you can see it actually hit right off of that $24 level on uh on thursday and then ended up going down and the thing is is that with palantir just be very careful with it because it can be pretty volatile and we just did hit that resistance as well so just be very careful with it um i don't want to see you hold and have this stock go back down under 21 dollars, which would be pretty bad i think that it will hold that though hopefully we can break above 24 and head up to 27 like you want this week but just keep in mind when trading things don't always go how we want it to so just be risk adverse and just have a good plan no doubt. With the last question, we have Cleo saying, uh, what do you think of SKLZ? So um, I actually like this one for a dip buy, actually, like maybe like some cash secured puts. The implied volatility is at around 116%. Um, I, I personally think this would be good for a dip buy. Um, do you have any like levels or anything you're watching? Yeah, as far as the levels go, it's an awesome support here around 1650 or 1670 on the daily chart. It's just been, an, that's an amazing support actually. Hopefully it can start to pop back up here. I think this will be a pretty good dip buy. You know, this was a pretty popular stock as it was heading up to $45. And now it's honestly insanely cheap all the way down at 1875. So if you were gonna dip buy, I think this would be a good one, but definitely look into the fundamentals behind the company. But given what they do, I think that they will um, do pretty well in the future. Sounds good. Well, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for this week. Yeah, I'm going to be watching crude oil, and we've already talked about it a little bit, how they pop with that production increase. But I think stocks like GUSH and stocks like DRIP could play well. Now, DRIP is only going to play well if oil goes down because it's a leverage ETF. And GUSH will play well if oil goes up because it's leveraged to the upside. And um, GUSH is a 2x leverage stock. So keep in mind that if you're playing oil to the upside, don't buy this and hold it. It should be um, almost like quicker trades because this stock will go down in the longer run. And you can see that whenever oil had the time of going down, I should say, over the past couple of weeks, you can see a move from 90 all the way down to $61. And if we go to slash CL, you can see crude oil only moved from around 65 down to 60. So it, um, GUSH is going to have much larger moves than oil. So if oil does go up, GUSH could be an awesome stock to get as it comes back up to $90. But if oil goes down, maybe try to play DRIP and also be very careful with these stocks because they can be risky given that they are um, leveraged ETS. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, 
day trades, swing trades, and access to our bots. You can click the first link in the description down below for about $40 off. And then also in the description down below, we're going to have the link to the new channel. Uh, Tom and I, are we started a new uh, live streaming channel. Um, we're working on a couple of things behind the scenes before we're ready to go live. Um, more, we're going to give some more information, like we're going to give updates every day in these videos, but um, we look, we're very excited to start streaming. So make sure to subscribe to that new channel. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.